Hey, I wanted to show everyone how my fuel system is set up. I get a lot of questions on fuel setups and uh, how to uh, put a electric fuel pump, convert one over to electric fuel pump on these G bodies. Uh, I see this question get asked all the time. So I just wanted to run through and explain how mine's done. I've taken the lines off of mine. Um, to try to simplify this a little bit, but here's what I started with. This is a Grand National, Buick Grand National, uh, sending unit. And I put it in the factory G-body tank. Now the difference is there's a baffle. Uh, I'm just going to leave it in here. An internal baffle inside the tank on the fuel injected cars. I'm talking like Monte Carlo's with the 4.3 and then the, uh, Grand National with the Turbo 3.8. Mine is full of ethanol right now, but on the fuel injection tanks, you have uh, you have an extra baffle in there to try to keep the fuel from going sloshing around all over the place and actually keep it around the bucket of the fuel pump and sending unit. Now, if you're looking at this car and thinking what is going on here, so this is my homemade methanol setup and. Uh, I'll make a video about it later on. It's pretty simple. Very cheap. We'll start with the fuel pump. All right, so I have an Aeromotive 340 liter per hour pump uh, stuck onto this sending unit. And I don't remember like which one. I don't think it does matter which pump. Like they have a uh, they have options on like the inlet, I think, if it's offset or not. And I don't remember which one I got. It looks like it's centered up. I think I used the, the rubber hose that was supplied and I made sure that this was able to be used with ethanol. And I'm running E85, so uh, I don't want the ethanol to eat anything up. I can tell this zip tie is already, it like, it seems weird, I don't know, like, I don't know if the, if the alcohol is eating it up or what. This rubber gasket o-ring seems like it's fine. Everything looks fine. Uh, it's been in the car for a couple years. Okay, so when you get this sending unit, there's going to be some things that you're going to see that are different. This pipe right here is going to be... is going to have a vent on it. And the vent is going to consist of a uh, a white uh, valve, it looks like. And uh, I took mine off because I needed that metal line, that one specifically, to be my fuel return. And I used it because it has the metal ring around here to hold uh, an AN adapter. So this is my return. And it's probably not a good thing to have your return splashing fuel up here at the top. Uh, it sh this is the factory return for the fuel injection setup. And it goes to the bottom of the tank, and that's the correct way to do it. And the 3 8 line is obviously the supply, fuel supply, high pressure line. So I took that valve out, and when I did, and this is a brand new thing, and when I took that valve off of there, it had mud caked up in it from... Something, I don't know. Uh, some bug had got in there and caked it full of mud. So it wasn't venting anyways. All right. And as far as the wiring, uh, you can use the supplied connector that Aeromotive sends and wire that into the sending unit wiring. And I use those solder, heat solder connectors from Amazon. Those things are junk. I've used some nice ones. The cheap ones from Amazon are trash. So let's talk about these lines, these connectors right here. These are about a quarter inch longer when you get them because a rubber hose is supposed to hook up to them. Well, I'm using an AN fitting. All right, this is the AN fitting that I have switched over to and I'm using AN lines. And then these collars screw in behind them and screw into this fitting well then this collar it 
can get any light here, screws up against the back side of this collar, and then the fitting from your line actually screws up against the other side of this collar. So I had to cut a quarter inch off of these lines because they're sticking out too long for this collar to screw on. I used a tubing cutter and I cut them back and I tried to uh, chamfer them, uh, tried to smooth them up the best I could to make sure it wasn't going to cut the O-ring when I put the O-ring on or slip the fitting on because it has an O-ring in it. So I did that and I got it to the right length and it works. Uh, it's going to be kind of trial and error trim to fit. It looks like it's about 5 eighths long. But that's how I got the AN fittings to go on and I'll put the part number to the AN fittings. Uh, in the description that's the fuel pump side of this and if you have any questions let me know I think one thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to add a hose to this to try to get this return to the bottom they say it's bad for the fuel to uh, be from the return to spray into on top of the other fuel hot fuel spraying on top of the cold fuel I'm, I'm not sure what the deal, big deal is there but it's a problem I had this dash, uh, I don't know what it was, I think it was a number eight line made a long time ago. I made it too long, but I made it to put in basically any vehicle. I didn't want to have to get lines remade. and It was expensive, but uh, I got it. So this dash eight line, okay, we're going from a dash six line, adapting it up to a dash eight through a factory GM uh, Silverado fuel filter. And that fuel filter, I need to do some research on it because it may not be, it probably shouldn't be used with eth uh, ethanol uh, if it's a paper element on the inside. So I'll, I'll probably change this later on, but I have this line looped up and it goes to the front of the car. There's another one here, which this happens to also be a dash six, but it doesn't need to be that big. Dash six line running up to the front of the car. All right, from that dash eight line coming up to the front of the car, I've got it ran through the car and through the firewall here to the fuel rail where I have got another dash eight to dash six adapter and then another one of the same fuel line adapters I use on the back. That's the fuel supply to my factory rails and uh, bigger injectors, but factory Silverado fuel rail. Okay, so now, going back through, I have a regulator, which this regulator I don't need. I've gutted one before, but uh, I think LSX Innovations, or, or that ICT billet, they sell a uh, regulator bypass, like a block off, to get rid of this regulator. And I'll show you why here in a second. So, uh, fuel return, another AN adapter, to a fuel return line. Coming over here to my regulator. Now my regulator is set to the same pressure as the factory fuel regulator because um, obviously it's gonna keep it at that pressure. Uh, the factory regulator isn't gonna allow less pressure. So I have this set to the same pressure, maybe a little bit higher, but I put this regulator on because it's a one-to-one -one boost reference regulator. And this will always stay with the car, so I don't have to uh, rely on the factory regulator. And then this regulator has a vacuum line uh, to a vacuum block, which is the main line going to the intake manifold. All right. So then from the bottom of our regulator, back to a dash six, back through the firewall. And back to the rear of the car. So that's what my fuel system consists of. Um, I am using a, some 60 pound injectors and whatever, but that's, you don't have to use those. And I was using the factory injectors for a long time until I went with a turbo setup. Okay, and from the vent, uh, which is now coming from here, 
I'm not sure if my vent setup is working right, and I'm not sure if this is the best way to go about it, but there's still a hole up here. So this vent line, which is only like a quarter inch, it is hooked to a rubber hose here. And I actually have this looping around and coming up to around the, the uh, filler neck of the car, which I know you can't see it. And I'm not sure that it's venting right. It must not be. I think it's actually smashed up against the body and pinched off somewhere because I'm having to loosen my gas cup up just a little bit after it's tight. I'll loosen it back up just a hair because if I don't, it acts like the thing is running out of gas. Uh, you get maybe a mile away from the gas station and you have to stop and loosen up that gas cap or it won't run. So if anybody has had experience like that or... Yeah, if you know what this, the solution is to that, if it's a gas cap or whatever, let me know. Okay, and then this is the wiring from, uh, I believe this is the factory wiring off of this sending unit when you buy it from a parts store. And I imagine any parts store is going to carry it, don't matter. And then this wire here was the factory wire going to the fuel gauge of the car. Now I just hooked that up and it works. Gas gauge works in this car. Uh, this connector I've got hooked up to, uh, it comes from the bottom of the car, hooks up to this female connector. And it goes through the trunk floor through a grommet. And here is the line for that, the wire for that. I've got it going into a relay. Now, uh, the power of the relay goes through a regular fuse, a little fuse panel here. And I've got a 20 amp fuse on it. And that is hooked from here to another block for some reason, and then it goes straight to the battery. So, I don't have a voltage issue with my pump ever. Um, the, let's see, you'll have a ground wire. And it just grounds to a spot that you can find a ground. Okay. And then this uh, signal wire comes from the front of the car. Now I just used the factory speaker wire because it was already running that way. And I don't have radio in this thing. I care less about speakers. So if you're not sure what's going on or if I didn't explain it very well, shoot me a message. I'll try to explain it the best I can. And this is what works for me. Um, but, you know, obviously it's not the best looking setup. Uh, there may be cheaper ways to go about it. Um, the reason I went with the dash or the uh, AN line was because of the, for one, the higher fuel pressures, and two, um, I didn't want to worry about ethanol eating up the rubber fuel line. Which there's fuel line you can buy that is just fine with ethanol, but the, it still gets hard. So it kind of worried me. Anyways, all AN line, AN fittings, sending unit, aftermarket pump, uh, I'm going to be adding a second pump to this if I can fit it in the hole. So um, I will make another video on how I'm going to do that. So there again, uh, got any questions, let me know. Thanks.